Local news about local people. This is Newslink Indiana. Hello, I'm Chris Bavender. Thanks for joining us. An early morning accident Friday on I-69 killed a Muncie man. Police say 21-year-old Mark Ringlesball was northbound around mile marker 12 near Pendleton when the car went off the right side of the road and overcorrected into the path of a semi. Ringles Ball was pronounced dead at the scene. His three passengers had minor injuries. Police say weather wasn't a factor. Ringles Spall was a Delta High School graduate. The ice storm brought down thousands of branches. The cleanup has brought help from all over. Newslink Indiana's Aaron Schweitzer explains. The Muncie Sanitary District says it has removed 5,000 tons of debris so far, but it has taken help from other counties to do the work. It's been excellent to work with. Um, they work very hard. Um, they come to us on a daily basis. But most of these guys are not in it for the money. Being outside and just the hard physical labor. We feed them and take care of them and of course it gets them outside the prison. And so they want to come back. They have a waiting list of people that want to come assist us. 20 volunteer inmates from the Pendleton Correctional Facility answered Muncie's request for help with work. The minimum security prisoners are paired up with the towns and tree crews and city employees. The first day they showed up, they just said, show us where, we, where to go and go to work. And, uh, you know, they have guards with them. This was the first time the Muncie Sanitary District used inmates, but Mike Ross hopes it won't be the last. In Muncie, Aaron Schweitzer, Newslink, Indiana. Ten inmates from Atterbury Correctional Facility also commute each day to help. Piles of tree limbs remain uncollected in Delaware County due to an overwhelming amount of work and lack of manpower. Delaware County commissioners say they must wait to see if federal funds are available before they resume curbside limb removal. Highway Superintendent Bob Adams says the main concern right now, make sure roads are debris free. President Bush approved federal funds for 64 counties, including Delaware. Governor Mitch Daniels was in East Central Indiana Friday to assess storm damage. Newslink Indiana's Abby Walton has more. Mitch Daniels in the Federal Emergency Management Agency spoke with Anderson residents today about financial aid they might be eligible for. We, we just wanted to meet a few people who had come through all this <coughs> and hear your stories for a minute or two and verify what I think I know is the case, namely that everybody here did all they could do to pull together and help. But And we were without power for six days and, and we were without power for almost four days. Uh, tree limb, fell on the house. My, I was out for about five and a half days. Quite an experience. Thank you. Under Secretary Larry Brown says Daniel's request for federal aid, money that will help Hoosiers rebuild homes destroyed by the storm, was approved by the president. Welcome news for resident Judy Turpin. Uh, I, feel, I feel very positive about it. I think it shows he has an interest in really knowing how people were impacted. While Madison County is one of 64 counties in Indiana eligible for federal assistance, FEMA said that other counties may be added to the list as needed. Daniel says while the damage covers most of the state, he's grateful to the many federal and state agencies that have helped return life back to normal. In Anderson, Abby Walton, Newslink, Indiana. Other East Central Indiana counties eligible for help include Blackford, Delaware, Grant, Henry, J, and Randolph. To find out if you're eligible for assistance, you can call 1-800-621-FEMA. Well, the Muncie Regional Commerce Office is going out of business, but not by choice. The office, one of 12 statewide, was created less than three years ago. It's located on the Ball State campus. Now the Daniels administration plans to consolidate the 12 offices into five, based on regions. New Commerce Secretary Pat Miller says the move allows more focus on job creation. Other offices set to close include Fort Wayne, Kokomo, and West Lafayette. The closest office will now be Indianapolis. Well, Ina Segal joins us now with a look at our weather, and we had a little uh, respite from the snow, but more is headed our way. Yes, Chris, we did see plenty of snowfall yesterday in the past couple of days, and we did get a rest, but we are going to see more. The National Weather Service has put out a winter storm warning for Muncie and its surrounding counties until tomorrow night. Our almanac conditions for today call for a high of 34 degrees and a low of 20. We're usually at 32 and 15, and our days are getting longer. 
precision cast is showing a snowfall is going to enter our area as we head into the overnight hours tonight starting at midnight and if you ask how much snowfall we're going to be receiving we're going to be seeing five to seven inches in Muncie surrounding east central Indiana if you look if you go up north where they're seeing close to greater than 10 inches of snowfall and south of Muncie they're looking at three to five inches keep in mind this is new snow for tonight but as we edit head into the day tomorrow we could be seeing close to one to three more inches of snowfall for tonight we are going to be seeing increase of clouds we did see sunshine but the clouds are coming back snow begins after midnight and we are going to see a low temperature of 18 degrees and winds out of the east for tomorrow be expecting snow showers blustery conditions because we are going to be on the back side of a low temper a low pressure system so the winds are going to be picking up so you be careful you might be seeing drifting snow or blowing snow in the area our high temperature for tomorrow is 22 degrees and winds out of the north your five-day forecast calls for snow saturday as we head into sunday we're going to be seeing plenty of sunshine as a high pressure system is moving into the area our high temperature for Sunday is 19, but we are going to get a break from the snow. I like those breaks in the sunshine. Thanks, Anna. Definitely. Anna. One, two, three strikes, they're out. The Richmond Roosters may have to play a ball somewhere else. The Roosters owe the city nearly $70,000 in back rent. The Frontier Baseball League team has played at city-owned McBride Stadium since 1995. The Parks and Recreation Board says it needs the money to help balance the budget. The city and team hope to work out a deal to keep the Roosters and repay the debt. It's a highly anticipated game, one with a rivalry that goes back years. Muncie Central and Muncie Southside in a face-off on the hardwood. News Link Indiana's Lindsay Jamison has a preview of the action. Two teams, one court. The outcome of the game, bragging rights. Muncie Central and Muncie Southside face off Friday night on the court for the first time in the regular season. Central goes into the game ranked second, Southside 19th. But in a game like this, both teams are there to win. You can throw the records out the window. You can throw the rankings out the window anytime in any sport, you know, that South and Central play. You know, it's going to be for bragging rights. It's going to be for pride, city pride. So, Central's team takes the court with seven seniors who have played together since sixth grade. Members of the team compare it to a family. I've been around them really all my life, so it's really just like a family around too. Members of both teams are even friends. Many have played together on AAU basketball teams since they were little, but that won't come into play at game time. They're friends off the court, but you know, once you step out there, it's, uh, it's no holds barred and they're just gonna get after each other. This will be coach Matt Fine's first run in with Southside as the Bearcats head coach. He thinks his team is ready. This week has been no different. We, we get after them in practice and they practice hard. And... As for which team is Muncie's best, only the buzzer will tell. In Muncie, Lindsay Jamison, Newslink, Indiana. Game time 8 Friday night at the Muncie Fieldhouse. Tickets are $4 at the door. And that is Newslink Indiana. For Ina Segal, I'm Chris Bavender. Join us again Monday at newslinkindiana.com for more news.